Hello everyone, Pallytub here. Welcome back to Rogue Legacy 2. We are in the Sun Tower on a brand new character. This is an Enkindled Boxer. It's the Boxer subclass. And I unlocked it after completing some more challenges off screen. Or more accurately, just completing challenges we've already done with new classes to continue to get that currency. Uh, this character is very unique. Instead of having super duper fast punches and uh, a very high focus on combos, we now have a brand new attack, which I have to be very careful when I show it to you. That's why we didn't attack those guys. Our new attack launches our boxing glove at our enemy, almost with the same trajectory as a fireball spell. But that impact area over on the left can deal damage to me meaning that uh, super duper up close enemies could potentially be very difficult to deal with uh, so maneuvering around them is going to be pretty important luckily for me we are playing as a boxer and i didn't do a good job of showcasing this in our actual boxer video mainly because i didn't know it existed but now with the help of the youtube comments i know all about it the boxer actually has an elusive trait, which means that if an enemy is not attacking, the boxer can walk through that character's hitbox without incurring any damage. For instance, this guy right here. No problem at all. I had no idea that was a thing. Now you do have to be careful. There are some, I wouldn't say inconsistencies with this, but you have to understand the mechanics of the character that you're going after. For instance, that first mask that spawned in there, I uh, would have been screwed if I tried to move through him because his movement is basically him attacking. You know, his entire goal is to get his hitbox against my hitbox to deal damage. Unfortunately, we took some damage on the way up. This is a fucking vegan <laughs> boxer, so we can't actually heal with chicken. As if this run wasn't gonna be difficult enough, you know what I mean? As if we were like having a hard time to try to find something to make these runs harder. Sure, let's throw in some veganism. Why not? Ooh, nice crit on the end there. That is one really nice benefit to this particular weapon. If you can angle the shot right at the far end of its travel, it's a guaranteed crit to deal damage to our enemies a little bit faster. Oh, pinned in the corner. I still have a super duper hard time on this map in the Sun Temple. I have a really, really hard time navigating it. This is something that we're gonna have to grow through together. There's gonna definitely be some growing pains along the way. Ugh, like when you deal damage to yourself, trying to jump to get, oh my God, this room's actually looking terrifying here. Now, one thing I should mention is we do still actually have, nice double kill there, the ability to punch enemies anywhere we want to. That is still a thing, but we have to combo to make that happen. Uh, so I have to land two of our boxing projectiles in order to enable that attack. And the fact that I have to be so close to enemies really uh, kind of scares me. <laughs> I don't know how often I'm actually going to be using that attack on this unique subclass. We're gonna have to just totally bypass this guy and then turn around to deal some damage to him there. Nicely done. We have one of the masks pursuing us on the left, but a decent attack sets us up really nicely there, actually. You know, one thing to the Sun Temple's credit, this place has a lot of money. So even if I don't make it super far in these runs, we can still turn ugh, a decent profit as I take damage yet again. Okay, let's check out the left side. Is this anything too sketchy? We actually have a secret over on the left. Uh, that guy down at the bottom left is actually out of my range. Oh, didn't mean to take damage there. Of course, I never mean to take damage. I don't have to say that every time. Uh, even though we've kind of been getting slapped around, that nice baseline armor that we have is going a long way. Doesn't this slow time when we cast our spell? The Incandescent Telescope. I have been getting used to some of those artifacts from doing the actual challenges, like the, the ones where I beat bosses and stuff. I've been picking up a decent number of them, starting to get used to their effects, but using them in that mode doesn't actually tell you what the description is in 
the normal castle playthrough. And I don't think that it should. It's just we have to find them and interact with them in our normal runs. This guy should be in range for our attack. Yes, he is. His friend is definitely in range for our attack. Oh, we have a great setup in this room. I wish every room was just a long hallway with no one <laughs> being aggressive towards me at all. Just a bunch of enemies. See, I'm not sure how I'm going to attack this guy. I have to come in from this side. Just a bunch of enemies standing still, waiting for my damage. Of course, we take a little bit more from that fireball coming in there. We could continue up the outside of the castle, or we could check out these side rooms. I'm definitely partial to these side rooms. They have significantly less platforming, meaning that I can usually make some better progress as we're climbing the castle. Some bunnies ahead of us, and my god, that, di that thing appeared out of nowhere! See, this is, this is one that's going to be hard to hit. Let's hit him with the combo. And it looks like that combo was enough to kill him. Nicely done, nicely done. Let's check outside. We know there's one chest at the very top, and it doesn't look like too much of anything else. There's no chest in here, just enemies above us. I mean, I probably should go for the wealth. That's probably a good idea. Nice bounce off of that trap, using it to actually help me ascend the tower right now. Ugh. Uh, there is a way up on the left here. Even getting to the way up is hard. Ooh, nice bounce, though. We're good. We're looking... Ah! We were looking good. Do I have to double jump early? Maybe not. I could just bounce all the way across with that. Beautiful. You know, that wasn't a lot of money for all of the effort that took and all the damage I took and all the effort that it's still taking. Oh, and there's no door to get back inside and over. I'm actually panicking. Okay. Okay, we're good. Challenge room here. <laughs> no, no thanks, man. I, I don't need a challenge right now. I'm challenged enough. Thank you. Uh, we might be able to hit that mage through the wall, but it looks like that is not how this is going to play out. I was hoping to get both of those guys stacked in the corner. Remember, these are the new upgraded mages that have seeking projectiles. Nice. Okay. That's a pretty good flow. Pushing an enemy away from you so you can get them in range of your actual projectile. That has a nice flow to it. I can get on board with that. Hey, stay on that side. Nice combo, too. We do get to ascend this room here. Let me send this guy over to his friend. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I can get on board with that. Unfortunately, unless I can do some ridiculous acrobatics here. Ugh, just out of range. Ugh, can't quite get it. There is a rune that lets me get, I believe, a third jump. I don't think I'm making that up. If I had that, we'd be able to access that, no problem. Really tall room here on the right side. We are currently sitting at just below 300 HP as well. Which, all things considered, not that bad. I mean, I haven't gotten any healing from the actual environment because I can't. Nice bonk up to the top. I don't think I can actually follow up with any damage, though. That was looking really close. We almost took damage from that attack. Uh, if I ascend, there is a chest. Oh, I have to. Uh, uh, oh my god, what were those balls doing there? <laughs> That's a really funny out of context clip. I hope. <laughs> Uh, I hope that doesn't come back anytime soon. <laughs> uh, let's check this top room here. Ooh, chest in the corner. Also, elite in the middle. We do take some self damage there on accident. Ah! 60 damage from a single projectile from this guy. He is not messing around. We can do a bouncing attack on that to clear it out. Looks like another one moving through the, the floor chasing after me. Wow, he certainly does have a lot of projectiles. This chest on the right, will it be worth it? It looks like we have a brand new piece of gear. This is armor we haven't found anywhere else. The Crescent Chest, made of ore from a falling moon. That sounds kind of, kind of cool, actually. That sounds really cool. Ever since we got into Baldur's Gate, which, you know, we're also playing on the channel, if you haven't seen it. Those streams have been pretty uh, pretty fun. Uh, 
I've had an affinity towards like moon stuff because one of the gods featured in that game is Salune, the goddess of the moon. And the, there's like a um, cleric temple where you can learn more about the character. I'm not gonna go into any more detail because what's going on in that temple is kind of cool for the story. Uh, luckily for me, we have a really good poison spell that's allowing me to uh, maneuver around this room and deal AOE damage to these guys. That was actually so sketchy and we did it without even talking about it. My brain was th thinking about Baldur's Gate. Ow. Uh, I played a cleric with some of my friends in a playthrough that we didn't record and I was just playing it to have fun. So I did some research into what Salune is and what that temple is all about. I'm into it. 33 damage from the saw blade. That's a lot easier to swallow than the 60 from a single projectile, but it still hurts. We do manage to clear all the enemies out and we unlock the focal rune increases your magic crit chance. Well, I wouldn't say that I'm having a smooth run, but you know, we're getting through it. <laughs> is how I think I would describe it. There is a chest at the bottom here. How hard is that gonna be? to get to, not that bad, not that bad. And 8,000 gold has actually been collected so far, which is a lot. That's more than we were making in most of our Stygian study runs. So even though this has been super duper challenging, I mean, we do have something to show for it. I don't know what to do with this though. How, there's about to be a bunch of balls coming down, aren't there? That might hit just short. That's okay, I can attack from here. Another one on this side, as well as another one of the ghostly mages. 18 gold per canister, or per, per bag. Oh God, oh no, no, good spell. Do it again. Oh, I'm scared again. Hold on, we're going back this way. Bob and weave, bob and weave. Now again, because those characters, their entire design is chasing after me to deal damage, the elusiveness of the boxer doesn't actually come into play there in any way. Ah. Just out of range too. Just above where I can actually hit. Hey bud, go that way. Let's do this again. Nice. Looks like we have a starfish over on the left side. Oh God, that was so lucky. Uh, what's going on in here? There's a, wait, doesn't meat attack me? <laughs> okay, it just deals damage. I thought I'd be able to like beat it up to get some extra health back or something. That wasn't the case at all. Uh, this trap hasn't changed at all from the original castle and inside this chest, we have the crescent cape. Nice, actually getting some new gear. Feels really good. I actually don't know what the bonus on the Crescent set is at all. We'll, f we'll find that out together at the end of the episode. We'll go talk to our blacksmith friend. One more chest over on the far right side. This is looking pretty daunting. Nice. Oh my goodness. The Scholar Cape plus two. I must have hit some threshold before. We were kind of talking about this in our earlier episodes where like I was just, I already had all the gear from the easy places. So I felt like the game wasn't giving me anything. Well, I feel like we definitely got all of the gear from an easier place. And now this area must be a different tier of gear. It has to be. Oh shit. Saw it at the last second. Easiest trap in the book. I fell for it. We cannot ascend anymore on the right-hand side, but look how much ground we've already covered. There is a secret on the other side of this area. Ouch. 107 health left. We've actually done relatively well for ourselves. Destroy all targets with a five second time limit. Hate to break it to you. There's no fucking way. Not with an attack that could potentially kill me. I'm not going to be super aggressive with my attacks there. There's there's no way I'm getting that. We can continue to ascend here somehow. Platforms on this side. Couldn't reach them. Got to land one more. Wait, I still can't reach them. 
So I'm not able to double jump until we get to the top. Got it. Uh, one in ha! Ah, one enemy on the right side. This is why I hate this zone. The platforming gets so difficult. Oh no! How do I knock him away? Ah! I tried to dash into the pedestal to get myself thrown towards the ceiling. Wasn't able to do it. But our boxers do get leveled up. Are we gonna get two levels? Just short of two levels. As Sir Mauricio, is that how you say that name? Is slain. We did get a decent amount of money. I'm also gonna play another custom clip. <laughs> hey, this is a great opportunity to show you guys what Vertigo is so I can say I did it and never select it ever again. Vertigo is hands down the worst trait in the game. Nothing even comes close. This is how you have to play. Wait for it. Wait for it. What? You know, I've heard that, I don't know if this is true. I've heard that this is how your eyes actually process the world and then your brain's just like, bro, I got you. And it just figures it out for you. It just orientates everything for you. Can anyone substantiate those claims? Is that true? I don't know if it's true. Like I said, I just heard it one time. Let's take a look at the Crescent set. This is intelligence gear boosting our magic damage. Did I guess that? Cause I was thinking that. Yeah, plus seven to int. So not really something that I'm trying to go after right now, but it is pretty cool that it's there and that we could have it. Um, if I, I can't do too much else actually. Let's look at the castle. 10,000 gold we have sitting around. We could go for mm, potions recharge your class talent. That seems very specific. I think if I grab this, we may be able to unlock another new class. And it is a doozy. One of the best classes in the game, hidden over on the right hand side, the Gunslinger. Super duper strong. Gunslingers are all about popping and the stapping. You may be wielding the most versatile weapon in the world, but the lack of a strong knockback means you need to stay on your toes for enemy counterattacks. Find good angles, stay moving, and always keep an eye on your ammo. Uh, I am going to play this right now, but there's no way we're going to play this character. We'll just lock it in for another run. I'm not sure what I can expect to find in these other areas though. It looks like the castle doesn't actually get any taller over here. And that was an extremely expensive upgrade. But I mean, I guess it's not bad. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> My brain doesn't even work this way, dude. It, ah. That's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for being here. We will be taking a look at the Gunslinger next time. Although, like I keep saying, this area is so difficult that it may not be a long look at this character. See you guys again tomorrow morning. Take care.